Listen to Holy Hills Radio. So bang your fancy eye. Listen to Holy Hills Radio. 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 The number one station. When Jesus had healed this uh, ten people, only one person came to say thank you. Most often we take the blessings of God for granted. God does so much for us, our going out and our coming in, in spite of all the killings and everything that is going on, we don't remember to say thank you to Jesus. One fact of the matter is the guy who returned was a Samaritan. He was somebody who did not belong to the Jewish culture. He didn't belong to the Jewish people. But he remembered to go and say thank you to Jesus. Sometimes people who are supposed to know better, people who are supposed to be the Christians are the ones who are not even being grateful. This evening, I want us to remind ourselves of all the blessings. I know we have challenges in our life. Everybody does. We are not living in a perfect world. I mean, this is not heaven. So definitely, you are going to go through issues. One thing will go, another thing will take over. And then we should always remember that people are also not as privileged as we are. When you go to Africa, people cannot even afford three square meals. Simple basic things, they cannot afford it. So we are blessed. We are blessed and it's no effort of ours. It's been by the grace of God. So this is just by way of a reminder that we should show our gratitude to God for all the things he has done for us. At this point, I'm going to hand over to our presenter, Joycelyn, to take over. Joycelyn, take it away. Hey, hi, everybody. My name is Joycelyn Akumia, a.k.a. Queen Joyce. I'm back again on Holy Hills Radio, Echoes of Grace. Um, Mr. Isaac Pinto is the CEO and the controller of The Machines. Um, today we have this beautiful young lady here and this lady here also to chime in and help. And we're going to be discussing African parents. You know, I talked about that a little bit on my own interview, but we wanted to dig a little bit more into it and let you guys get an insight on how we see you parents and how our relationship is like with you. So we'll just get right into the questions. Julia, if you don't mind, you know, just introducing yourself, tell us about you, you know. So, hi, I'm Julia Nkrumah, a.k.a. Princess Jan, you know. Um, so, I am I go to Worthington Kilmore High School, and I'm graduating this year. I mean, well, next year, 2019, you know. Be there, be square. <laughs> so, um, basically, I'm just here to answer questions for Joyce Lynn and this interview. Cool. So, uh, where were you born? Like, I was born in Italy. Italy, um, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I moved here. How you know, old were you like, when you moved here? I was like three-ish, four-ish when I moved here. So you don't really remember anything? I mean, when I see pictures, I get memories, but like not oh. really, you know? <laughs> okay, that's interesting. Yeah. All right. Um, Michelle, you want to introduce yourself again for the people? Oh, yeah. Hi. I'm Michelle Akumya, a.k.a. Ya Michelle. Um, you know, <laughs> same hey, thing, like senior, me, 2019, be there, be squared. <laughs> All right, cool. So let's just hop right into the questions. So, Julia, in your own words, what exactly is a typical um, African parent? So, well, the obvious answer is a typical African parent is a parent from the African descent. <laughs> and um, to us, like, let's say we're comparing it to, like, Af uh, like, American parents. It's, like, the stricter version of just the regular parent, you know? Okay, yeah. Krisha? Yeah, I agree. Okay. <laughs> Cool. So basically, in your opinion, an African parent is a parent from Africa, a stricter version than an American parent. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So what is your own like personal relationship with your parents? I mean, I, 
my relationship is pretty good. I mean, like, I talk to my mom and dad. They talk to me. Like, mm. whenever we have problems, we come up forward. We listen to each other. So we're pretty good. Like, there's no complaints. Like, no, it's my mom. It's my dad. You know? <laughs> I love y'all. <laughs> Okay, so you can, you just, you know, you and your parents just talk to each other all the time. You're pretty open with them. They're pretty open with you. Yeah, basically for the most part. Okay, all right, cool. So then, um, do you feel like you can talk to your parents about anything and everything? How open are you with your parents? Okay, so there's just, for me, I don't really, like, I know that, like, sometimes, like, there's just some things they won't, like, understand because like how they were raised compared to like like where they were raised compared to like the mm-hmm. day and age we are now but like for me basically i talk to my parents for most stuff but like let's say i'm talking about like things i've noticed like most people like they don't talk to their parents mm-hmm. about things just because like they're either scared or their parents will yell at them or like something that like will just throw them off so they talk yeah. to other they even talk to other people's parents mm-hmm. for that yeah so that's true it just depends on what it is maybe probably because like it's your own kid and they'll yeah. give it to you hard you know mm-hmm. not really that easy going with you but um because of the reaction mm-hmm. okay that's understandable so what exactly are some of the things do you believe that the youth cannot talk to their parents about give um, us the real the good details um, Feel free to chime in, Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, I mean, for I know like people they like if they do something like let's say bad, they can't go to their parents because they're like oh like they don't know what to do, or if they're like in trouble at school, they know like their parents are gonna be like, oh, you should be doing better. They they just won't understand, so they can't talk to them about that. About relationships, like if they talk mm. to their parents, like. They're like, hey, how old are you? Like, <laughs> it's just like there's specific stuff. What do you think, Michelle? Yeah, definitely relationships. Not that I'm in one, but yeah, um, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, relationships, yeah, of yeah, course. I mean, yeah, you wouldn't really be able to talk to your parents about that. Yeah, because again, their reaction, yeah, how they take things and how they give it back to you. Yeah, relationships. What else? Sex. Can you talk to your parents about sex? Um, I feel like they should be the one talking to us about right. it. Yeah, because like, yeah. have you ever talked to your parents about sex? No. Have you ever talked to your parents about relationships? Well, I'm not. No. <laughs> but just in general, I mean, even future wise, like. Um, I mean, it depends which parent, because I mean, okay. I feel like it's I easier to it. talk to okay. like yeah. <laughs> women than it is fa- like fathers. But yeah. then certain things you can talk to your dad more and have him understand. So it just really depends. Yeah. Okay. So what about school? Like, do you talk to your parents about school? Your grades? I mean, I talk to my dad more with school actually it depends like it depends what it is honestly wow. so even school like we can't really yeah you know so, like, open up completely about it yeah feelings at school like friends yeah, yeah i mean for me i always just tell my parents i don't have friends at school because i don't like i really just go to school <laughs> to like learn and having friends just throws me off so it throws you off yeah, I just don't like associating with people. Like, I'm friendly to everybody, but, like, my parents know I like to be me. Like, I like to stick to myself. If I need help, I talk to my peers at school, but, like... Peers? What's the difference between peers and friends? Friends are people, like, you talk to outside of school. Okay. And, like, I don't peers talk to people just, like, outside of school. Yeah. Interesting. I didn't really know that. I just me thought either. friends were peers. <laughs> peers were friends, but <laughs> I guess not. You learn something new every day. <laughs> All right, um, Michelle, what can you talk to your parents about? Um, hmm. Our parents about. Our parents. <laughs> I can definitely, I can talk to them about school, yeah, <laughs> when my grades are good and popping. <laughs> but, but, yeah. Um, can you talk to your parents I, about sex? I don't really feel comfortable talking about that with Have them. you talked to them about sex? Probably a few times with my mom, yeah. How old are you? I'm 17 years old. Julia, how old are you? 17. Okay. I mean, I feel like we're, um, like, we're maturing faster than a lot of the kids, well, I guess at their time. I feel like we're maturing a whole lot faster, and even the kids in our generation are maturing a whole lot faster as well. So, like, what teenagers are thinking about right now is, like, probably what adults think about. What kids are thinking about, what teenagers are thinking about, it's, like, we're moving faster and at a 
you know, faster rate and everything. So I feel like, yeah, I mean, we're just at a different, like, mentality. So parents need to really talk to us about all these kind of things, you know? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Again, this is Holy Hills Radio, Echoes of Grace, hosted by, you know, Queen Joyce and my two lovely young ladies here. Um, so, uh, next question. Uh, um, what do you think that African parents, like, in general, can do to establish a better relationship with the youth? Listen. Listen. Just listen. If your child is trying to talk to you, just listen. Mm-hmm. Instead of, like, impulse reactions. I feel like if you, like allow them and give them the chance to talk yeah they will be able to like understand instead of like that impulse to either yell at them or the impulse just to ignore them like if you like listen to your children i feel mm-hmm. like you'll you'll get a better connection they'll feel yeah, you more definitely. you know yeah definitely yeah. i feel like a lot of african parents <clears throat> they are really quick to they don't listen to um what's the word they don't listen to the word. They don't listen. They don't like listen to, to like, um, you the know, whole picture, the big get, picture. They don't listen to um, give you like you know good feedback or to talk to you or to you know, um, resolve the conflict. They listen to like give you their peace of mind. They yeah. listen to just it's go like, right back at it with you like yeah. instantly. And they, I feel like you guys really need to take the time and listen. Actually, listen to what we have to say. I don't know if it says in the Bible somewhere like don't be quick to um, I don't know the verse. Guys, <laughs> it's like don't be quick yeah. to um, you know. Listen to understand something like yeah. that instead mm-hmm. of listening to just to you just know, talk, talk back. back. Yeah. So mm-hmm. parents, like, how about you try listening to us for a change? Mm-hmm. You know, listen to what we have to say and compromise with us because if you don't, we're always going to be butting heads. And if you want to establish that better relationship with us, I mean, yeah. I'd say you have to, you know, work with us. Don't yeah. work against us. We're trying to reach a yeah. common goal. We're trying yeah. to reach love. We're trying to reach respect for each other. So, mm-hmm. you know. Um, do you think that parents raise their kids based on how they were raised growing up? Yeah. Just, yeah. Really? Yeah, okay. I do. I just feel like they don't, like, I mean, my mom has, and, like, and my dad, they, like, have seen, like, obviously things are different. But, like, I've noticed and, like, pick-pointed, like, mm-hmm. people, like, they just, like, oh, in Ghana, that's not how we do things, so we're not doing it here. Right. Like, they just, like, th- how we were raised is how you're going to be raised, mm-hmm. so then you become like me. But I think that if we, like, adapt to, like, this day and age and, like, they, like, raise kids from there, like, you'll get, you'll achieve more. You want your kids to be better than you, not at the same level as you, you know? Definitely. So do you think it's, you don't think it's acceptable for parents to raise their kids how they were raised? It depends. Because, like, some, like, yeah, you're cool. Like, I mean, it just depends on who it is, honestly, because, like, my, I know, like, my grandpa and grandma, like, they obviously raised my mom the same way my mom and dad are raising me, and, like, mm-hmm. I like that, like, most of the times, but, like, some parents, like, they were super, super strict. Right, right. And, like, so they're, like, I have to be the same way my mom yeah. would be, like, mm-hmm. you're not allowed to go out past, like, seven, like, it's not late yeah. at 7 p.m. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, seven is not late. It's not. Yes. It's not late. Yeah. So, it's but not like, late. They're just, always calling your phone like, where are you? Where? Yeah. Seven is not Nine late. Nine o'clock. late. <laughs> like, now, this day and age, like, p- things even start at 8 p.m. Right, like, right. Yeah. So, like, and, like, they'll be, like, like, a kid will be, like, I'm going out. But, like, they won't let them finish. They'll be, like, no. Mm-hmm. Like, what if they're, like, I'm going out to church? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, right. you need to listen like to church everything they're going to yeah. say. <laughs> so, like, I don't know. You should. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, anything to chime in? Uh, no, same thing. I agree. <laughs> totally 100% agree. So, like, what are some of the positive things that parents, um, you know, every, I mean, I guess every parent was, you know, raised differently. But what are some of the positives that could be, that you've witnessed that could be, um, you know, taught with you and some of the negatives. Did you or you should talk about the positives, you know. It's up to you. Like, um, what are some of the positive things? Like, you said you, used to, um, you see some of the same patterns that your mom um, had with your grandma. Like, mm-hmm. maybe your mom was, like, your grandma was um, kind of lenient with your mom, so mm-hmm. she's lenient with you. Or she was strict with your mom, so she's strict with you. Like, what mm-hmm. are some of the... You know the patterns that you see. Okay, so I'm guessing, like I'm not sure, like I should ask my mom, but like <laughs> <laughs> trying to be safe. I'm, <laughs> I'm guessing like my mom and my grandma, they used to like talk, mm-hmm. 
Like, I mean, they had an open relationship. Yeah, they, like, used to talk about a lot of stuff. So my mom always wants to know, like, what's going on mm-hmm. with me, you know? That's good. Like, yeah. she doesn't, like, just keep herself in the shade. Like, she wants to know what's going on. Like, for example, um, let's say my schooling or something, if I'm struggling, instead of, like, just saying, like, oh, like, you're in trouble. Like, she listens. Like, she understands. Like, she lets me talk. She mm-hmm. lets me give a reason. And that's what my dad does mainly, too. So that's one of the good things. And, like, they're not too open. Like, sometimes I notice some people who will, like, be out, like, 3 a.m. doing, like, who knows what. <laughs> my mom won't let me stay right. up till 3 a.m. Yeah. And I don't, like, I feel like if I was raised to be able to go out at 3 a.m., it's just not safe for my own good. Yeah. So, like, I have that mentality, like, Past 12, being out, there's, like, unless you're at all night at church, like, <laughs> there should be no reason you're out past 12. Mm-hmm. So, like, I mean, that's good. Like, Have you been out at 12 before? I, I, all night. That's the only time? <laughs> yeah, or, like, Michelle, what about at a you? sleepover, like. <laughs> what about you? Tell yes, us. I have. And how did that, like, affect you? Um, I mean, it didn't affect me until I came home and I got in trouble, so. Yeah. 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 I mean, something I've always like thought about is like college students, you know. Mm-hmm. Parents some parents are very um strict and with their kids at home before college. Like they're very um strict and they have set rules that they have to follow and it's like this, 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 this. But then when your child steps into college and they taste that freedom, that is when they they go yes. crazy, you know, they try everything because Parents, like, if you don't give your kids... I feel like freedom is important. Yeah. Really I feel like freedom is important. So I feel like if parents are not... I mean, too much freedom might not be important. You know, yeah, I mean, It yeah. might not be good for your kid because, you know, you don't want your kid while... You know, not while not. Let me use the <laughs> term. Like, you don't want your kids going all crazy and doing, you know, ridiculous things because, you know, that's your kid. You care about them. But if you are... Um, like confining your children and you're not um giving them any freedom they don't get to have a say so you know like when they get into college what are they going to do wow they're wow. going to go crazy <laughs> they're, going to, they're going to try everything whether it's drugs whether it's sex whether it's relationships crazy relationships like they're going to you know go crazy so i feel like parents should really think about that like give your kids you know just a little bit of freedom i don't think freedom is a bad thing like yeah but I don't know. Some African parents, you know, freedom yeah. is not... They didn't get freedom, so we don't get yeah, freedom. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I get it. And that goes back to the question, like, how they were raised, you know. Mm-hmm. Not everything that they were brought up with is what they should bring us up with. Mm-hmm. We're yeah. in a different day, a different age. Mm-hmm. Y'all not going to say anything? anything yeah. I mean, we yeah. agree. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you're speaking facts. So. I feel like... Um, so, like, I've noticed, okay. like, because, you know, like... We in Columbus, we see things. We know what's Keep, going on. Yeah. So, like, we know that, like, somebody will have, like, a strict parent here. Mm-hmm. And once they graduate, once they go to college, and they're like, wow, now I don't have to be home at this time. Like, right. They're they're gone, like, yeah. all night. And, like, you see, like I said about how my parents don't let me go out past 12, like, they, like, give leniency. Even, like, let's say, like, I'm a little late. They'll be like, oh, why would you do this? But, mm-hmm. like they're not going to be like, oh, don't do this ever again. Like, you're not going anywhere. Yeah. Like, they're yeah. like, okay, you need to figure out, like, you're going to wake up the next morning and be tired. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like, we know what we're doing. But, Sorry, like, at this right. point, like, all the people who have, like, the strict parents, it's just like they go out and then they regret what they do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, I mean, be lenient, you know? Be a little bit more yeah. lenient. Yeah, I agree. I mean. Yeah, because as long as you, like, keep your children in that small box with them, like, not being able to do anything, that like the more they're gonna go out, want to go out and explore, and yeah. 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 So, so just you know, parents be a little bit more lenient with us. You know, mm-hmm. give us a little freedom because you don't want us to be those kids that are out yeah. doing crazy. I'm gonna be honest, like with my own life, like when before um I started college, like I was ready, like I was ready to go have fun and just chill, <laughs> wow, you know. Wow. But you know, God kept me here. You know, I'm in. You know. I stayed here in Ohio, and, you know, my I'm, my parents were very, they weren't, like, super strict, and, like, they weren't super strict. I mean, they were, you know, <laughs> but they weren't, like, super strict and confined me. Like, I, you know, I get away with a lot of things, not a lot, but, you know, some things, and they're not, and it's not like I would go out and go crazy. Like, I'm, I just don't see myself as that type of person. Mm-hmm. But um, if my parents raised me in a very um, strict, you know, environment, I definitely would 
have my experiences in college, just being straight up and honest, I think I definitely would. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Um, so, do you guys think that African parents care about their public image and how much? Definitely. Definitely? Why do you say so? I mean, I feel like m- most parents want that, like, most parents want to be seen as, you know, the perfect, you know, yeah. the perfect parent. But, I mean, we all have our flaws. So we mm-hmm. all have our, you know, things here and there. So, I mean, we're not perfect. Yeah. I mean, like, some people, I feel like they even be faking it if they have to. Like, they'll be like, oh, like, I mean, about all your perfect. But, like, when mm-hmm. they go home... It's just like, <laughs> you know, that's not it. <laughs> so, I mean, like, yeah, they care about the public image. <laughs> yeah, they definitely do. I really wonder why. Like, why yeah. is, like, your public image so important? Like, in the Bible, let's reference the Bible, because y- y'all African parents love referencing the Bible. <laughs> so let's true. reference the Bible real quick. I know in the Bible, I'm not sure where, but I know it says um, we're not seeking human approval. We're seeking God's approval, right? Yeah. So why is it so important? Like, why is how you appear um, in the public, why do you have to be perfect? And why do your kids have to be perfect? Like, we can't make mistakes. Yeah. I guess so. I mean, we're all flawed. We're yeah. all flawed. Like, like, nobody is perfect. Mm-hmm. But then I, like, know, like, sometimes, like, I mean, if I feel like if I was a parent, I wouldn't want my kid looking crazy. Okay. Like, yeah, I wouldn't want them to be, like, other people talking about my kid. Yes. Like, it makes yeah. me feel bad. That's so, like, sometimes I'd be like, yeah, like, you don't want your kid to look crazy out but like sometimes they do care a little bit too Too much much. like yeah they have to understand that we do make mistakes Mm -hmm. you know and just be lenient with us like we're young and we're still learning and we're still growing so just you know take it easy with us we're gonna make mistakes we're not gonna look perfect in front of your friends every single time 24 7 so just be a little bit more lenient with us Michelle (laughs) (laughs) how much do they care do uh, your parents care about their public image? Do your um, parents care about their public image? Do you want to answer that? Um, <laughs> I mean, shoot. <laughs> to you, I mean, mother. I feel like a lot, everybody cares about their... Yeah. Yeah, I care about how I look in public, like how, how I present myself, but, I mean, if I make a mistake, a mistake, then, hey, like, it happens. We're human. So, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, let's get into some deep questions, you know, our relationship with our parents. It's not too deep, but a little bit deep, you know. So, um, how often do your parents say, I love you, to you? How often do you hear it? <laughs> okay, do you ever just tell your parents that you love them? Like, when I'm going to sleep. <laughs> like, so, yeah, like, when you're going to sleep, you're just like, bye, I love you. Sometimes. I mean, I used to do it when I was younger. Yeah. yeah. But, like... I mean, I feel like it's just not a normal word anymore. I mean, we probably should. <laughs> it's not a normal word. <laughs> like, we should. Like, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Like, too. I like, like it sounds weird. It's not, I guess, But, like, yeah. I feel like we should be saying it. But, like, it just... I mean, they know. My mom and dad know. Like, you guys know. <laughs> they know, but, you know... Okay, so I was watching this series, you know, the Mike Todd um, 24 Worship 24 series. Ever. And it was talking about how, like, um, your, um, like, love has to be expressed. Like... With God, mm-hmm. like, when you're worshiping, like, you have to express your love with your hands, with your facials, you know, how you're worshiping, like, standing up, you know, you have to worship God, express the love to him. You can't just say, I love you, you know? So, like, okay, do, do you, like, express your love to your parents? Yeah, like, sometimes, like, let's say, like, when I used to have a job, like, I would, like, go to the grocery store, i call my mom, be like, do you want something? Like, do you want something from the store? Oh, you're such a good daughter. <laughs> you're so sweet. <laughs> or, like, um, I don't know, like, I'll call my dad, check up on him sometimes. Like, he's a truck driver, so, like, he's gone, and I'm gonna be mm-hmm. like, hi, like, we say, dove say, it's in Italian. Like, where are you? Like, how, like, mm-hmm. what you doing? Like, yeah, so, I mean, it's the little thing. I feel like they know. Like, okay. yeah, they, they know that. Something that they should know. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I guess, imply. but sometimes it's good to hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, cool. So, did you hear I love you a lot when you were growing up? For me? Yeah. Both of you guys. Yeah. Growing up, yeah. Yeah, when I was little, yeah. Compared to now, you don't hear it a lot? Mm, too often? Here and there. Uh, I mean, my little brother, he's just like <laughs> me now. So, so like, he's just getting it all and yeah. then, okay. So when you're younger, you hear it more. So, I mean, that's good. And just let your kids know when they're growing up that they're loved, you know? So they don't feel, you know... I mean, what's the impact? If you're not being told that you're loved when you're younger, how does that make you feel when you're older? 
You see, I wouldn't know because like exactly that's true. Yeah, I feel like, like people. I mean, a lot of people would just I don't know feel. Yeah, because I mean, they like, won't feel the love from their parents. They won't have a connection with their parents, I guess, because yeah. their parents never told them when they were younger. Okay. Yeah, like I mean, like at school, like people like come to school and be like, "Oh, my parents hate me." Like, sis. Yeah, a lot of that's people just school. Yeah, sis. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think that's not a simple <laughs> thing. Like, they carried you in your stomach for what nine, yeah, months? nine months. Like, I'm pretty sure they do not hate you. So, yeah. like, it's but, just, I mean, like, maybe they're never told. You know, yeah. some people carry carry their children in their stomach for nine months, give them the third option. Yeah. I mean that's why it's different between like Africans and Americans, Americans. <laughs> cuz you don't you won't see an African like I don't yeah. think you would see an actual Ghanaian give up their child for adoption. Okay. That's just not how they were brought up to be, yeah. okay. you know. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um once again, this is Echoes of Grace for those of you who just joined us. Um Holy Hills Radio. We're talking about African parents and, you know, yeah. our relationship with them, how they are, how we see them and, you know, stuff like that. So. Yeah. yeah. So, um, what are some of the things that, okay, so there's some of the things that we need to hear, and there's some of the things that parents say that, I mean, I feel like we don't really, we know this stuff, we don't really need to hear it, but what exactly are some of the things that we need them to talk to us about, we need to hear from them? To not lose hope. I mean, I feel like most of our lives, we're going to school, so like, it's just like, school is a long process, Mm -hmm. so like, they should know like, don't lose hope like you know like we should be told like you might struggle here but listen a year in two months in two days things could happen just mm-hmm. keep praying don't lose hope like you know you might fail a test one day and then you'll be like oh i'm gonna give up but then like a week later you take another test get 100 percent, and your grade goes boosting up so like mm-hmm. just don't lose hope and like pray and ask for like help just, like guidance and everything you know think so. yeah, definitely yeah faith and like support especially like when going into like your career like I feel like African parents have that thing of like you have to be this and that I feel like whatever what? you put Let's your talk heart about to that real quick <laughs> yeah, yeah like whatever you like put your heart to I feel like they should back it up like no mm-hmm. matter what it is because it is our lives right that we're living not so. everybody's meant to do the typical doctor Lawyer. you know nurse yeah. lawyer I don't even hear lawyers anymore <laughs> right I hear He's doctor dying. nurse um engineer like not yeah, everybody's cut out yeah. for that there's so much like god has put inside each and every like person so much yeah. potential so much um that they could give and do but we're being confined like i feel like we're being confined well at least now i feel like parents are being more open mm-hmm. yeah but i remember hearing just like nurse 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 all the time you know mm-hmm. but <laughs> maybe that's i know that's not just me but <laughs> i know i heard that a lot so just don't confine your kids as well like you know let them explore but that's not the question. The question is, what do they need? <laughs> what do they um, need to discuss with us? Like, what are the things that they need to tell us themselves? Them being our parents, what do we need to hear as youth, as you know, growing up? What do we need to hear? Don't lose hope. That was a good one. Don't lose hope. Yeah. Um, what are the conversations they need to have with us? I think that parents should talk to their kids about relationships. Yeah. Is that awkward for you? No, I mean, no, that's not in my mind right now. So I'm chilling. Uh, oh. <laughs> that's not in your mind. That's not in your mind. I mean, like, not like, you know, I feel like future. children, 10 year olds, are talking about relationships. So yeah. let's not, let's not sugarcoat anything. Like, ten, I'm honest, like, nine year olds, 10 year olds are talking about relationships. I've heard conversations with children. They don't, probably don't know exactly what it is, but they talk about it. Yeah. I mean, so should I a parents, like, you know, now, at, like, in this day and age, I be noticing things that, like, when I was 10, I didn't know that yeah, stuff. Yeah. But they know that stuff right, now. Right. I'm just like, wow. Like, mm-hmm. I don't, like, I don't know. It's just, like, some things that they do now, I just, like, I didn't know, and I still don't know. Like, they're mm-hmm. the ones showing me this stuff. So, like, mm-hmm. now, like, once your kid is old enough to think on their own, like... Talk to them. Talk to them about everything, because <laughs> they're going to find out quick. Yeah. Everything. School is yeah. toxic. Fast. School, like, they pick up a lot of things from school, so... Yeah. Put your kids in good <clears throat> Relationships. Tell them to talk about hope, faith. Make sure you talk about God with your kids, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Talk about God, you know, feed that faith. And, like, understand, yeah. Like, actual understanding, not go to church and listen yeah, to preaching. Yeah, like... Because it's the difference between going to church and actually, like, knowing, like, 
the word and knowing God. You can yeah. sit there and listen to preaching all you want and not take anything from it. But like when you're really like deep in your Bible, like your Bible mm-hmm. is your weapon. Yeah. It's definitely At what your age do you guys did you guys actually start, you know, um getting into the word? Like we you know, we all used to go to church just because our parents was going to use the Bible. We didn't have a say so. So at what age do you guys think you guys started, you know, developing that relationship with God? Maybe you haven't yet, but maybe you've already started, you know. What age? So personally for me, I mean I have this little story. Okay, so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Story time. So, story time. <laughs> For me, personally, I feel like, okay, so you both know, like, we have this group called Sisters in Christ, Mm -hmm. and, like, we help each other, honestly. Like, if it wasn't for them, I feel like I wouldn't be so, like, like, reading my Bible wouldn't be so fun. Like, trying to figure out new things, trying to get closer with God wouldn't be so, like, fun, wouldn't be so, like, intriguing. Like, I can just be there, and they'll be like, oh my gosh, guys, I found a good preaching. Mm -hmm. And then we're just like, oh, wow, this is good, and just discuss it, you know? Like, even if, like... Like, we have a group chat. Not everybody talks in it, but, like, yeah. even <laughs> even when you see it, and you, like, you, like, you're just, like, it keeps you thinking, you know? Like, yeah. we keep each other going, so yeah, I'm, I'm sure, you like, yeah. So, like, we started that, what? I don't know. Last year? Was it been a year? I think it was before last, last year. year. I'm not sure. I guess I was 15, yeah. 16. Yeah, 16. like, around 2016, 2015, like, that's probably when I started, like, Getting myself so sort of, kind of recently, sort of, kind of not. Yeah, yeah. You know, two years ago, and that just goes to show, like you thought that you know the eight year, I mean the eight year olds and stuff. Maybe not eight, maybe like ten, thirteen. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I guess that's a pretty, I mean, reasonable age to really start, you know, developing that yeah. relationship with Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, because I mean. You're kind of still growing, trying yeah. to understand. Still Sunday school, yeah. learning. So. Yeah. I mean, we're learning every day and learning yeah, yeah. all the time. So. I feel like once they hit youth is like, yeah. when like, because like. Youth is a big turning point. Yeah, yeah. shout out to our teacher, teacher. Kennedy, yeah, because Kennedy. Kennedy and Asa, Asa because everybody. they keep you thinking, they keep mm-hmm. you like, they they just move you. Like, we have like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Because <laughs> they like, right, I remember right when I hit youth, it was just like, Kennedy would give us our talks. Also, would give us our talks. Eric Cry gives us our talks. Mm-hmm. Like uh, Uncle Joe, he would give us our talks, lady. and we're just like, yeah, Lady Rhoda. They would all give us our talks, and we're just like, wow, like we really need to like step up. We need to yeah. start praying. Like yeah. God is the key to everything. God is mm-hmm. real. Like, so <laughs> yeah, so we'd agree that parents should talk to us about you know God, yeah. mm-hmm. through, um, faith. Especially with the younger ones. You Especially, know? yes. And that's key. Like, start talking to your kids when they're young. Yeah. yeah. I said like this in my last one. interview. Yeah. Start talking to them when they're young because I think when you're young is when you learn the most. Yeah. You know? yeah. It's, it's when you acquire you. things and actually start, you know, developing those personalities and, it, you know, stuff like that. So, yeah. All right. So, um, <laughs> let's go back to the parents' discussion. I think that was enough for, you know, that. But um, do you guys think that African parents or your parents, you know, tie it in, um, allow you to truly speak your mind when necessary? Be honest with us. I want to get ahead. honest truth. We're all learning here, right? We're all learning. Yeah. Um, like it depends at times. Like I mean, like sometimes. They allow it. Sometimes they don't. I feel like, honestly, like, face-to-face is different than being on the phone. Because, (laughs) like, a parent can call you Mm -hmm. and just doesn't want to hear you talk. Like, if they're mad, (laughs) they're just like, no. But then when you're face-to-face, they have no choice but to listen. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's different. Um, That's questionable, but yeah. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, okay. Well, yeah. Like, they hear you. Mm It's just, if they reply, that's a different story. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. Okay. But what's the question again? <laughs> I Do you like... think, like, your parents allow you to speak your mind when it's truly necessary? Um, or just speak your mind in general? In general, from, like, what I see, sometimes it's, it's usually, like, they kind of want to talk more than they want to listen. hear you yeah. listen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, th- I feel like it's all about communication with your children. Why do you guys think that parents do that? Like, they... Do you think it's because of how they're raised? Do you think it's because we're younger, so we should just listen all the time and not say anything? Like, what do you think? <laughs> they why, all ties in. Like, that? I think they just think anytime we say our, like, <laughs> it's talking back. Okay. Yeah. Because, like, true, yeah. true. I could be like, 
I mean, like, I mean, my mom, like, I, we've gone through this. Like, I'm not talking back. <laughs> this is just me talking. Expressing but I, yourself. Like, I know, like, people, I notice, like, they'll be trying to talk to their parent. And they're like, hey, why are you talking back? Yeah. yeah. Like, they're just talking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, they're just trying to have a conversation. Yeah. It's not a one-sided conversation. Mm-hmm. It's a yeah. conversation. Yeah, that's what they got to understand. Like, yeah. Especially, like, to, to find common ground. If you're, like, mm-hmm. the one speaking the whole time, you're not going to get anything from the other person. Exactly. So you kind of have to listen to both sides yeah. and, like, find common ground. Or else yeah. it's just going to be a fight. Kids, if you're <laughs> talking to your kids, you kid is just standing like that, trust me. <laughs> trust me. It's going in one ear and just right out the other because they're not listening to anything. Because if you're just talking, 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 they have nothing. To they know that they can't say anything. <laughs> exactly. They know you're not going to give them the time to talk or say anything. So they're just sitting there. And, and they're they like, okay. Scared. They nod, but they're not really listening. <laughs> just saying. You're just, you yeah. know. They're, yeah. And I feel like Mm-hmm. On that point, you're just scaring your kid. Like, <laughs> like they're gonna, you're gonna make them scared to talk to you about it's anything. True. Yeah, it's true. That's totally so true. Like, <laughs> like if you're, I don't know. Like if you go into a conversation knowing that you're gonna say no, like try to make it a maybe at least. You know, like if your child wants to go somewhere, like I'm just gonna keep that as the common like example. Yes. Like if your child wants to go somewhere, don't just say no. Like don't just say no. Be like, okay, but if this happens, it's on you. If if you're not home by this time, it's on you. Like, like everything is on you. Like, make them responsible for their actions. So, like, let's say, like, how she was talking about college. So, let's say, like, let's say something happens and they go to college. You're going to be like, oh, wow, I remember when my mom let me go out and mm-hmm. this happened. I don't want to do it again. Right. Yeah. So, like, find common ground. Don't go into a conversation with your strict answer, you know? Yeah. Like, don't just go Freaking in there with seat. no. Yes. Yeah. That's true. You also said something. Yeah, I was gonna touch on it, but I kind of forgot what you said, that part that you said. But it was good. Yeah, you said something earlier. Like I don't know. I don't remember. When I remember, I'll come back to it. <laughs> All right. So, um, how do you think that parents can resolve conflict with their kids? That comes back to listening. Okay, and let them hear it. They need to hear. It. I let them hear as many times as you know. We gotta. Yeah, so like they just say listen. And listening. Yeah, I mean. I, and nowadays, apologizing isn't really a thing. <laughs> yeah, so, they, with young people, with I, old people, with anybody yeah, apologizing both is just sides. not a thing. And I, I, I mean, I've seen that's kind of true. I've seen yeah, uh, some like a parent and a child arguing, and they said sorry, and they'll be like, no, don't tell me sorry. <laughs> like no. it's just not a thing yeah. that people say anymore. So like, just listening, like. Children, apologize to your parents. So Try mad. at least. But if you know apologizing makes them mad, then don't do it. You know what I just thought of? <laughs> I used to, um, like, when my, my dad and I, when I used to, you know, get in an argument, per se, let's say argument with my dad, and, like, he would probably be in the wrong. Let's be honest. He'd probably be in the wrong. <laughs> and then he knows he's in the wrong. So then after he's done, you know, yelling at me and giving him giving me his spiel, then he would say sorry, and I don't even want to hear it. Like, I'm just yeah. like, I'm done. You already yelled at me, I already got the heat, and now you're saying sorry after you realize that you, my side was probably right, you know? Yeah. So sometimes just take your time. Take your time, parents. And like, your time. And okay. like, well, like, I know, like, this is a tip I've noticed from my mother. <laughs> so, like, y'all my mother's auntie esther so um when she like gets angry at me or like i do something and she gets angry at me she just takes time away to like not like she doesn't yell you know she doesn't she doesn't yell like when i'm with her she doesn't yell she just takes time processes it she makes sure she's like my mom prays all the time so but she makes sure, like, she goes to sleep and wakes up with, like, a fresh brain. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. like yeah, that happened yesterday, but, like, today's a it's new so day. So, like, yeah. she You guys should do that. Take tips. That's a like, good, I like quality. Go to sleep don't and wake sleep up with angry. a... Yeah. yeah. That's if, in the Bible. I don't know where, <laughs> but it says don't go to sleep angry. Yeah, so when you wake up, wake <laughs> up like, oh, my child. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, just wake up with a fresh mind. Wake mm-hmm. up with love in your heart. Be Renew happy. Your mind every morning. Look, I have all these Bible quotes just in my head floating. They're very useful. <laughs> all right. Um, 
So once again, this is Holy Hills Radio, Echoes of Grace with Joycelyn, your hostess, Julia and Michelle. We're talking about African parents. We're about to wrap up shortly. Um, <clears throat> so at this point in time, what is the take home message for the parents? Like what um, should the parents, what do you have to say to the parents in general? All together, both of you guys. Um, in all respect to my lovely African parents, <laughs> Just listen, listen to your children, and try to, um, try to like interact instead of like telling them what to do. Like try to come to a common ground. If you want your child to do this, okay, let me talk like African parent, bro. If you want your child to do <laughs> one, like don't just go one and if they have to go to one and a half, like find them in the <laughs> <laughs> that didn't make sense. sense okay so like okay if you say no they say yes find that middle them ground in the middle. List, mm-hmm. listen to them find them in the middle don't just go to that automatic no or don't go don't just be like yes do whatever you want like be like there's consequences if you do something bad like mm-hmm. you're going somewhere okay cool don't come home after midnight because that's not okay. Like, if something's going on, keep them updated. Like, kids also, like, if you know your par- something makes your parent mad, don't do it to, like, I don't know, like, I, sometimes I just don't know what goes into people's <laughs> brains. Like, if you know something makes your mom or dad mad, don't do it. It's yeah. common sense. So, um, yeah, basically just listen and children... Find that common sense and don't do things that make your parents mad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely find common ground with your parents. Communication. Just listen to each other because it can't always be one-sided where one person is talking. Like, you're not going to get anything from that. Also, you know, in all respect to all parents and everybody, like, just, I don't know, just love each other. Like, even, like... <laughs> Like, also prayer. Like, I don't know if people, like, pray for their children or or the children pray for their parents and, like, mm-hmm. their relationships, but I feel like prayer is definitely a, a key factor in, like, your relationship with your child or with your mother and your father. So, yeah. All right. I hope, you know, you parents learned something today. I learned a lot of things. Did you guys learn a lot yeah, of things? Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's good to talk about this stuff because... You know, sometimes we probably don't know, you know, we have all this, you know, information inside of us mm-hmm. and we're like, yeah. okay, this is what I want to see from my parents. This is what my parents are not giving me. Mm-hmm. This is the things that my parents need to do better and whatnot. And we could also, we have a part to play. We could also yeah. do better as yeah. children, you know, you know, also find that coming out. It's not all about what we want, what we want. We also have to listen to our parents as well. So, yeah. Um, do you have any shout outs to anybody else want to shout out to? Yeah, okay, cool. Okay. okay, so shout out to my mom and dad, mm-hmm. Auntie Esther and Uncle Bedu, um, Stephen, you know, <laughs> um, Papa, you know, what's up? <laughs> and um, shout out to my sister, Mama, and my sister Judith. And then <laughs> shout out to my pastor, my old pastors, my new pastor, like Pastor Portofi, we miss you. <laughs> So, Mama, we miss you, but like we love our new pastor too. So, yes. yeah, of like, course, everything is cool. So, um, shout out to Sisters in Christ because you guys have obviously built us up. Shout out to Hannah Smith, yes. Sister Sylvia, Hannah. like Grandma Sil, we love you too. <laughs> so, just and shout out to these beauties because this is my bestie and this is just Mama <laughs> Mama Josie. So, <laughs> Queen, but, yeah, shout out to me, mommy. <laughs> And my dad. We love you. We love you guys. You guys are the bomb. All right. Yes. Closing out.